He's the eighth commissioner of Major League Baseball and was part of the investigation into Pete Rose back in the late 80s. And he is Faye Vincent here on the Rich Eisen Show. Pleasure having you on, Faye. Thanks for calling in. Well, you're very nice to have me. Thank you. Of course. What did you think of Rob Manfred's decision to uh, maintain the lifetime ban on Pete Rose? Well, uh, I thought it was uh, superb. It was uh, hard to find any fault with it whatsoever, and I thought it was uh, totally predictable. Why would you think it's totally predictable? Because uh, I don't think um, the commissioner of baseball wants to give up the deterrent effect of that rule. Um, the Pete Rose case is not about Pete Rose, although he tries to present it that way. It's all about the deterrent. The deterrent is one of the few things in American culture that's totally effective. We haven't had any gambling on baseball. We haven't had anybody make a mistake except Rose for years, decades, 50 years. Well, in, in many ways, what I thought when you said it was predictable that you thought that Pete Rose couldn't have presented uh, a changed man saying that I'm, I'm no longer gambling, I'm no longer... Um, uh, taking the stance that uh, I refuse to admit publicly that I gambled in every capacity uh, as a player or a manager. I thought that that's what you meant by predictable. Well, effect. that's also true. But, you know, in my world, and I think in the world of the commissioner, that's not the issue. The issue is how could you possibly change that deterrent at a time when you're dealing with a substantial problem with performance-enhancing drugs, when gambling is becoming an enormous threat to all sports, when the whole country is... Look at the draft, the uh, fantasy baseball, fantasy football business that's going on. The country's crazed on the subject of gambling. And here you have a case where you've got a deterrent in a sport that's totally effective. So there's no way the commissioner was going to change that. I mean, no commissioner would do that. And I, I salute him for not doing it, but I can't say it was, a, it was a close question. I don't think it was ever a really serious question. Did, uh, did Commissioner Manfred ever reach out to you uh, on this subject to see what you, as somebody who was so integral to the investigative process, as well as being a former commissioner, did he ever pick up the phone? Well, he challenge? did. He, uh, not directly in the sense that he didn't call me. I did talk to him about it early on. But he uh, sent his assistant, uh, John McHale, whom I've known for years, who really managed the uh, review for the commissioner. And McHale worked on it for months and did a very thorough job. He talked to John Dowd at great length, who did the investigation for Giamatti and me. And, and uh, John took him through the whole background. And, of course, the Dowd report is a remarkable document. It stood the test of every single person who's tried to attack it, and it stands as an example of how to do these things. John did a terrific job. Faye Vincent, 8th Commissioner of Baseball, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you say? I just had a, a caller call in uh, to my show saying that it's time served, that enough is enough, that what Pete did as a player, that he deserves to be in the baseball Hall of Fame. Now, the commissioner, Rob Manfred, said that's not his table, essentially, that that's a separate issue. Can we really separate these issues in your mind, Faye? Well, I think you can, um, it, it, certainly in terms of procedure. Uh, obviously, the Hall of Fame at any time can adopt its own rules. It can say uh, we're willing to admit people who are on the uh, on the ineligible list, such as Shoeless Joe and Pete Rose, and we're going to do that. And we're going to admit um, people that that uh, have major problems with uh, baseball, including people who have been uh, cheating via the performance-enhancing drugs. In other words, the Hall of Fame can do anything it wants. That's separate from baseball. Now, can you separate them in terms of the the substance, uh, no, I don't think you can have ceremonies in the, uh, in the jail yard at Leavenworth to present rings to uh, baseball players who are doing time for serious crimes, and that's the risk you're going to take if you don't have this character test. There has to be some limit on the character of people that we want to honor in baseball. So if I were involved with the Hall of Fame, and I'm not, I would argue they have to keep 
a standard of behavior unless you want to give rings out at the Leavenworth uh, a prison, and I don't want to do that. Well, there are some people that were probably hearing that, Faye, saying that what, what Pete Rose did, it doesn't rise to the standard of whoever did anything that would put them in Leavenworth. Well, A. Pete Rose, among other things, did do time in a federal prison, so that's not totally irrelevant. Okay. But the fact is that there's a character test to prevent someone who was a guard at Buchenwald but hit 350 from becoming a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, and I'm all for that. I think there should be. Now, I would make it a fairly uh, out there limit. I mean, I think we don't want to have people uh, disqualified because um, they didn't pay their taxes on time or something. But if you, if you commit a serious crime, certainly one of violence, uh, and you've done some just heinous things, I don't think you should be in the Hall of Fame. Faye Vincent joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. That rule that the Hall of Fame voters adopted to not make anybody who's on the uh, banned list from Major League Baseball eligible for votes in the Hall of Fame happened a month before Pete Rose was eligible. Did uh, your office have anything, any contact with Baseball Hall at that time over that rule? No, what happened is that I was on the board of the Hall of Fame at the time. Uh, all commissioners are. But uh, Ed Stack, who ran the Hall of Fame, was worried about what would happen if uh, Rose were to be uh, declared ineligible. And he, he could see coming that there was going to be a major issue. And he called me and said, we're going to have a meeting. I'm going to propose a change or a adoption of this a rule as you cited, and he said, uh, you shouldn't be involved, don't come, uh, it has nothing to do with you, and I think you should stay away from it. He was very wise. I didn't go, I had nothing to do with it, I never lobbied for it. it did, in, indeed, to me, it was an entirely separate issue. Now, as I just said to you, if you talk to me on behalf of the Hall of Fame, I would say they did the right thing. Um, and, you know, if you if you want to admit Pete Rose at the Hall of Fame, you have one big problem. You've got to get somebody to vote for him. And the fact is, there's no question that among the members of the Hall of Fame today, there's virtually no support for putting Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Even if you had the vote, look, Marvin Miller's not in the Hall of Fame, and he was a great man and probably had more to do with the great success of baseball. Certainly the players success in the last 50, 75 years than anybody, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. So I think that the chances of Pete ever being in the Hall of Fame, even if you put, them, put him to the vote, are basically nil. And everybody who's looked at it and talked to the members confirms that. Former baseball commissioner Faye Vincent joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. When this all was going down with the Dowd Report and your predecessor and, and good friend Bart Giamatti, was going down, and you and Pete, it was time, it was go or no go time for Pete Rose. Did you, Commissioner Giamatti, John Dowd, ever put on the table something for Pete Rose for him to sign off on that would not have given him a lifetime ban and would have given him a path back into baseball? Was that ever on the table for Pete Rose? No, and one of the problems was we talked. Um, I think they raised, his lawyers raised early on about what if it's a 10 year, 20 year term or something. And eventually, at one point, we began to think about that. I mean, should we think about a duration? And then one of the lawyers for baseball pointed out that under the rules, everybody who's on the ineligible list has a right to reapply or to apply for reinstatement after one year. So we had. A 10-year term wouldn't work because we couldn't get over the rule that said if you're on the ineligible list, you can't be there without having a right to to reinstatement or to apply for reinstatement. So uh, that went out the window as soon as we confronted our own uh, rules. The fact is that once the evidence developed and it was so clear that Rose had been betting on baseball, not just as a uh, manager, but as a player, and we had that uh, information in, in very good form. There was no willingness on Bart's part to do anything other than throw him out for life. Now, we said if he reconfigured his life, reconfigure was my word, 
I said to Bart, look, the guy has to reconfigure his life. And Bart said, what do you mean by that? And I said, I don't know. I mean what it, what it says. He has to persuade us that he understands that this involves baseball and it involves what's best for baseball. Rich, if I could say one thing that I think the public has to recognize, sure. this issue has never been about Pete Rose. It was always about what's the right thing for baseball. And when the public says Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame, they're confusing what's going on with this deterrent with Pete Rose's personal situation. Those are two entirely separate issues. So uh, in, in summary here, um, Faye, do you think the fact that we're, it's now 26 years later, we're still talking about it, he's still applying for reinstatement, and that uh, Commissioner Manfred used the term that he didn't have the maturity to understand what he has done. Do you think when it's all said and done, Pete Rose, in a candid moment, would tell you he didn't do anything wrong? I think he probably would. He would, he would say, I did some things wrong, but they're not as bad as a lot of other people, uh, things other people did. In other words, I think Pete Rose has never accepted that he's got a massive gambling problem. He's still betting on baseball. We now find that out. I mean, imagine going into the commissioner, and when the commissioner says to you, Pete, are you betting on baseball today? Rose says no. And then during the interview, he changes his mind. He said, well, no, I really I, I have to clarify that. I am betting on baseball, but legally I'm betting at the casino. Now, the, Manfred noted that. That tells you all you need to know. This guy has a major problem. It could be said to be a problem of just not perceiving, uh, delusional. It could be an addiction problem, it could, any number of problems. But Pete Rose, unfortunately, is his own worst enemy. Faye, thank you for calling in. I truly appreciate it. I, I'd love to chat with you more about your tenure as uh, a Major League Baseball commissioner uh, down the road. I would love that. Well, you call me anytime. You're nice. I appreciate it. Oh, you bet. Same. Bye. Thank you. That's uh, Faye Vincent, the eighth commissioner of baseball. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.